So yesterday we uh, we tried to sketch the proof of the comparison principle. So let me recall which was the situation. So our notations were this was T bar, this was A, this was B. T bar. Yeah. And we call this E. So in the discussion, so we have already, so let, let, let us rewrite down the Gauss Green theorem. Or also the divergence theorem. <coughs> Gauss Green theorem or divergence theorem. So omega is open, bounded. C1 so that we can integrate over omega the divergence of eta. And just to have uh, a well-defined trace on the boundary, yesterday we, we wrote C1 omega bar. It is enough, actually, to, to assume continuity up to the boundary. So this is. So the scalar product with the exterior unit normal. So this is omega. <coughs> this is nu omega. So this is enough for us because uh, we want to apply this uh, with our vector field. So we found uh, uh, yesterday the, the, the inequality was uh, maybe W plus uh, T plus uh, F of U V W uh, plus X less than or equal than zero, almost everywhere. This was the inequality found yesterday. And therefore, we can integrate uh, over the trapezoidal region, this, this region here, so that we find uh, this. Okay, now, now again, this is, um, so E 
is Lipschitz. The boundary of E is Lipschitz. And also, we have to relax a little bit the, con the conditions on eta, because uh, actually now we have a positive part of W. So this means that uh, this, this can be, cannot, is not necessarily of class C1. Even if W is C1, it is clear that when we take the positive part of a C1 function, then uh, uh, this can be Lipschitz. So, and again, this, this is still true. If we relax a little bit the assumptions. So Lipschitz continues inside and continues up to the boundary. And again, once you know that this is Lipschitz, this is differentiable only almost everywhere and not everywhere. But this makes no problem because the divergence is almost everywhere defined and bounded, and so no problems in this integral. Okay? So remember that uh, eta is almost everywhere differentiable. And also remember that, as I said, uh, here nu is well defined. almost everywhere in the sense of the surface measure. This is almost everywhere dif differentiable in the sense of Lebesgue in omega. And this exists almost everywhere in the sense of the surface measure. So no problems in defining these two objects, left hand side and right hand side. OK, therefore, now we can introduce the uh, new E unit, unit. So actually, this is new omega. And this is the unit sphere. Mm, this is length 1. OK. Uh, and so we, we uh, okay. So applying the Gauss Green theorem, the right hand side now is an integral of the solid set of the two dimensional set E. So this integral becomes an integral just over the boundary, OK? And then I have, so let, let me denote by nu e equal, say, nu t nu x. Uh, so this is. T plus f of v w plus u x. Okay. So and this integral splits into two parts. So it's an integral over the uh, horizontal regions. Uh, so it's an integral over the two yellow segments. So it's. Uh, so let, let me quickly denote by this. Oh, 
okay. And then, so dh1 plus the integral over the two lateral segments. Is it clear? Mm -hmm. So, uh, So let me call this contribution 1, and let me call the other contribution 2. two. So 1 is therefore equal to the integral from this uh, yellow segment hmm, uh, the top part and this is the, the bottom part so so let me simply write this is shorter say this is shorter just to indicate just this one now w plus is evaluated at t bar because this is t bar and knee the normal vector here is just the vertical component time component is just one hmm? and then I have to add the other one This is longer. Of W plus at time zero, and the normal time component is minus one. Right? This is just for what concerns point the contribution 1 to the integral. Mm -hmm. So now, uh, remember that uh, W was the difference of e, u minus v. And uh, this was the definition of W. And at time 0, this was the definition. And, and at time 0, this is obviously equal to this, which by assumption was non-positive. Because this function, u of 0, remember that u of 0 by assumption is less than or equal than v of 0. This is assumption. Therefore, this is non-positive. And therefore, this is non-negative with the minus in front. Hmm? Yeah, in particular. Hmm? Therefore, this is equal to the integral over this this uh, the shorter segment I, I, I could write integral between 
A and B, actually. W plus of T bar, uh, the other variable is say X dx. Hmm? Do we agree? So we we have for the moment that so let, let us let us um, so zero is larger than or equal to the integral from in, on the interval a b of w plus of t bar x dx plus 2. OK? Because 2 is exactly this, this integral. OK? So now, now, Uh, so this is 2. Assume that we are able to prove that 2 is, assume that we can prove that 2 is non-negative. Uh, if we are able to prove that 2 is non-negative, then we, we have the inequality this w plus of t bar x dx no non negative mm -hmm. okay so uh, we have this assume that we are able to prove this then we are here and therefore, we conclude, since w plus, uh, so we conclude that necessarily for almost every x in a, b, uh, w plus of t, x is equal to 0. Uh, because w plus is non, is non negative. But its integral is non positive. And therefore, necessarily, this must be 0, almost everywhere. If, OK, there is, there is a problem of regularity here, because this should be defined exactly, t, sorry, there is t bar here. Uh, this should be defined exactly at this slice. <coughs> and maybe, uh, well, no, this is Lipschitz, so no problems. It's defined also at this slice. So uh, OK, this is, uh, this is OK. Hmm? We agree? But then A and B were um, A, B, and T bar were arbitrary. T bar was arbitrarily chosen between 0 and capital T. T bar is arbitrary. A, B were arbitrary. Right? Therefore, for any t bar, for any a, b, we have this. For almost every x in a, b. And this implies that w plus is 0. Hmm? So, but um, t bar is arbitrary. a and b are are arbitrary. Hence, hmm? the 
And, and this is actually exactly what we want to prove. Because saying this is as equivalent to say that u is less or equal than v. So this is our thesis, actually. Huh? This is equivalent to say that u is less than or equal than v. <coughs> So what remains to show is that uh, um, two, so the, the point, so if you accept this, if you accept this, uh, we need to show that two is non, uh, that two is non-negative. Once we know that two is non-negative, then the proof is concluded, okay? So so the point is to show that the integral Now we have to compute the the, the unit normal. Hmm? So these lines are So here, this is equal to, so nu t and nu t here, so we have this is integral omega plus c. Because in one case, the, the normal is parallel to 1c. And the, in the other case, the normal is parallel to 1 minus c. So in this case, dividing by the, the, the length of these vectors, we, we find that this is equal up to the denominator of the length of these vectors, we plus. And the other part is equal to, uh, so there is the, the one divided by square root, one plus c square here. One divided by square root, one plus c square here. So, and then there is the other integral, w plus, uh, minus c plus f of minus c f of u v v plus the h1 the h1 so which is equal up to this factor which for which is uh, of course as a sign is positive so then I can write it as follows w plus 
C plus F of U V plus integral W plus minus C. Oh, maybe I've ma I, may I have made a mistake on the sign, probably here. Let me, let me check. F of U V. So probably I made a mistake on the sign, so that probably there is a minus here and the plus here. Yes, indeed. So sorry, there is a mistake here. There is minus. It is minus plus minus. Now, this is of course larger or equal than 0. This is, of course, larger or equal than 0. <coughs> and now you have to remember the definition of C, because C was the maximum of f prime of, uh, of uh, y, such that y is in minus LL. And also the definition of f of f of y, u, and v was an integral of f prime sort of uh, su plus 1 minus s v ds. And so you see that C is so large that C plus F of V is necessarily larger or equal than 0. This is maybe homework, but it's very easy from the definition. So this is so large so that this, even if this is negative, this is so large that this is non-negative and it's positive. And similarly, this is so large that even if this is positive, then this is negative. But that still, this is uh, so because of the choice of C made in, at, at the beginning, we have this. And therefore, this is larger than or equal than 0. This is also larger than or equal than 0. And the four, two, is larger than or equal than zero. And this concludes the proof of this delicate sketch, just a sketch, of the proof of this comparison result. Ah, sorry. OK. Uh, maybe I left you an exercise yesterday. So the exercise was the following. Assume that b is equal to b of tx, depending on time space. And let x of s tx solve the following characteristic system our no 
notation I think was this and uh, x of t was equal to x. And then okay. And then define u u of tx as the solution as as the initial the final the, the function u bar at x starting at time t at the position x and uh, uh, up to time t. This was the claim. The, this was the definition of u. And the claim was that then ut plus b grad u is equal to 0. Um, in, and u equal u bar this was the the exercise okay then so and this is so let us so the idea was to start uh, at some point here tx and then let run the uh, the trajectory of the sol of the solution of this uh, system of this uh, actually of this equation. Now we are in one space dimension actually. So because n is equal to one of this of this equation starting at time t at the position x and let let us flow it up to time capital T. So we reach a point here, and then uh, the claim is that uh, this function here solves uh, our uh, linear transport equation with final condition. Hmm? This was the claim, the, the homework. Okay. Okay. First of all. Let us see what happens at the final time. So if, if this is small u, then this is equal to u bar at x t t x. Hmm? And therefore, I am here. I, sta I start at time capital T from the point x, at the point x, and I, I run for zero time, because I start at time t, and I look at ex the same time t. So I am at x. I'm starting at x, and so by definition, this is u bar of x. Huh? Because I, my, my ODE. My equation there, I, capital X at, at capital T, what is, what is it? It is the solution of the ODE, which at time capital T start at this point X, time capital T started, time capital T start at, at this point X, and then Nothing happens. I mean, there is there is nothing to solve here because it's just an initial condition. Huh? So, by definition, x at capital x at capital T capital T x is x. Hmm? Hmm? Fine. Now. So uh, what does it mean? It means that our claim, so I define u as follows, then at least u satisfies this condition. So the boundary condition is, is, is OK. Hmm? 
Okay, so u satisfies this. Now we have to check that u defined as follows satisfies the PD also. Hmm? Well, one way, let us try to do this. So Uh, maybe b in the exercise, sorry, b maybe was b of just b of x. Huh? Sorry, so that we write this. No, no. Maybe check the notes of yesterday, but maybe it was b of x. Okay, sorry. Okay, b equal b of x. Now, uh, let us make the following remark. So, sorry for the notation. Because t is smaller than s, exactly opposite as in the alphabetic symbols. Sorry. But I, 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 I use this notation because uh, from the beginning, here this dot was d over ds. So this was a function of s. So now I take it again as a function of s, and I fix t, but t is smaller than s. OK? Usually in books, maybe you, you find exactly the opposite. This is d over dt, and then you fix s, which is smaller than t, like in the alphabetical order. But since we started from s, <laughs> OK. So let us, let us uh, remark the following uh, semigroup property. Property of capital X. So I, now I want to use specific symbols, so uh, let us take 0 less than or equal than t, less than or equal than s, less than or equal than capital T, and then I put something inside. OK. So as I said, t is less than s. So this is in agreement with our notation. OK, and then I put, I insert a tau in between. Mm? And so the idea is the following. Now, um, I have t, tau, and s. Now, if I consider the solution of the ODE, which starts at time t, and arrives at time s, starting at, at the point x, so x, x, evaluated at the final time s, starting at the, at the initial time t from the point x, huh? by uniqueness of the solution of the ODEs, is nothing else. Now, I let run the trajectory for some time up to, up to tau. So, and then I take as initial condition the time tau at the position, at this position, and I let it go up to time s by uniqueness. So I take an intermediate point on the trajectory, and I take that intermediate point as the new initial condition. That is, if I make a jump, say, from here to here, then it's the same that if I go from here to here along the solution, and then from here to here. This is because we have uniqueness of solutions of the ODE. Now, and now I want to express this. Let us try not to make confusion <laughs> with the symbol. So I start now. What is this point here? What is this intermediate point? Well, this intermediate point is what? I'm starting from t at the point x, and then I let it go for time tau. Mm -hmm. Then I um, take this as the initial point starting at time tau. Mm -hmm. 
and then I let it, the solution go uh, for time at final time s. Hmm? So we have this equality. Let me check that I am correct, hopefully. Apparently, yes. <laughs> so do, do you agree? So this is just the semigroup property. Hmm? OK. So now we can differentiate this. This is valid for any tau in between t and s. Hmm? So we can differentiate it with respect to tau. So do you agree? Have you understood this, this equality? Are there questions on, on this? Of course, this is a sort of group property, say. Uh, OK, anyway, it is called like this. Mm, so I have this for any tau in between, uh, uh, which is the smaller t and s. Hmm? OK. Therefore, since this is an equality valid on, on an interval, everything is smooth. I can differentiate it with respect to tau. And still, the quality of derivatives remains. OK? So differentiating this with respect to tau gives us 0 equal huh? OK, now we have xt evaluated at s tau x tau t x plus x x s tau x tau t x multiplied by the derivative of x with respect to x s tau t x. Hmm? x dot. OK? And this excess, which is x dot, actually, excess is x dot. Hmm? Because dot is equal d over ds, remember. And remember our notation, uh, our notation is. Hmm? OK. Now, <laughs> so this is b of what? Of x tau t x. Hmm? So now take, so we have to remember this equality, and take tau equal to t now. So let us rewrite it for in particular, for tau equal to t. And so I rewrite it here. So x of t, s, t. Now, if I take tau equal to t, this here, what is this object now? x. Thank you. x, x, s. T uh, x times b of t x. Hmm? And this is equal to 0. That is useful. Hmm? 
let me check it's okay. X t is t x b t x apparently is okay. Okay, so now we can forget this. Just remember that equality differentiating the semigroup property. Uh, and now we can um, look, go back to our definition and compute separately ut and ux. So from this, we have that ut at tx is equal to u bar prime evaluated at x t tx times the derivative xt t tx. Okay. Huh? B of T. Ah, sorry, thank you, sorry, sorry. B of X, sorry. Okay, just for simplicity, thank you. Okay, yes. And, and then, um, UX of TX is equal to U bar prime of X capital T TX, X, uh, X of T cap T X. Okay. So now you see. Now let us put small s equal to capital T here. Hmm? This is true for any s, so in particular for s equal to capital T. Okay. And then you see if you substitute, now that you can multiply this by b of x if you want. Okay, multiplying by b of x is equal to b of x. Now, if you substitute this with minus xt capital T tx, then you immediately see that this plus this is equal to 0. because they are opposite exactly, one or the opposite of the other. There is a minus. Okay. So maybe I have... Uh, Yes, maybe we can, this, did, did you try the exercise of yesterday for the Burgers equation? Did you, did you? So maybe we can, so if, if, maybe we can go through quickly through the exercise I left yesterday for the Burgers equation. So,
So the exercise, if I remember well, was ut plus f prime of u, ux equal to 0, where, so let us take the flux, the flux function f of y equal to y squared over 2, so that this is nothing else, uh, the Burgers equation u ux equal to 0, and u of 0 was u bar. And u bar and u bar uh, at time 0, say 0 t times r. And uh, um, u bar of x was now uh, was uh, 1 divided by 1 plus x squared. So actually, what we are identifying sigma. Sigma is going to 0, sigma, and sigma is identified with x, OK? So sigma is identified with x. OK with our notation. So this was the embedding, remember, phi from R into R2. This was the parameterization of sigma, capital sigma. Uh, and uh, OK. Now, so the system of characteristics so we have n equal 1. So we have x1 dot okay, b, the vector field b of x of, say, t, x and y is what? Is what? with our notation, the vector field B. One, Y. OK. So x dot is equal to x1 dot is equal to 1, x2 dot is equal to Y y dot is equal to 0. x1 of 0 is equal to what? x1 of 0? Zero. 0. x2 of 0 is equal to sigma, which actually is equal to x. And uh, y of 0 is equal to u bar of phi of sigma. And so is equal to 1 divided by 1 plus sigma squared. OK? This is our situation. We can solve these solutions. Well, sorry, we can solve this, um, this for instance, giving y of s and sigma is equal to what? So is 1, 1 plus sigma, because this must be const square, uh, simply. Doesn't depend on s. And then we have, say, uh, well, uh, x1 of s and sigma is just s, I think, because I'm starting from 0. So at the end, this will be identified with t, as usual. Huh? Uh, and x2 dot 
must be equal to 1 divided 1 plus sigma square, which gives us x2 of s and sigma actually equal to s divided by 1 plus sigma square. Uh, and then we have the initial condition, which is sigma. So we have this. Huh? Now, now our change of variable is the map taking S sigma. So maybe, maybe can I now S call it T? So I mean, S can be identified with T now, as usual. So, well, if you don't like, I like uh, S. S divided one plus sigma square plus sigma. And this is our diffeomor local so dif diffeomorphism around the strip uh, containing sigma, capital sigma. And uh, this <coughs> we want to invert it. But maybe the inverse is not so easy. Hmm? Because we want to solve for, say, t equal s, OK. Uh, but then we want to solve for, uh, say, x equal to t divided plus sigma. Hmm? So <coughs> given given t, maybe I write it as equal t. Hmm? So given t <coughs> and x, now I, I know it is invertible. I know it is invertible locally. And I want to find s of tx and sigma of tx. <coughs> so given t, s is simply equal to t. It's OK. But given x, sigma, so given x, I want to solve for sigma. So I want to find 1 plus sigma square x minus t uh, minus sigma times 1 plus sigma square. So given t at x, solve for, from, for sigma which is not so easy, actually. No? So actually, it's not, it's not easy. And therefore, we leave it as it is. We don't, we, don't, uh, we don't solve it explicitly. Just leave it implicit. We know that locally, we can, for small time, we can solve. <clears throat> because we know that locally D is a diffeomorphism. Um, so this should give for short for T less than some capital T. And X in R, in R say this gives us sigma solution of Tx. <coughs> one solution only uh, for small times. So, uh, so at the end, u of x is equal to y, u of tx, sorry, u of tx is equal to y y of uh, s of x, s of tx, sigma of tx. And therefore, which is equal to uh, 1 divided 1 plus sigma square of tx. And u of tx and x is uh, divided it. 
So we have sort of implicit representation of our solution U. Mm -hmm. Locally. Mm -hmm. Is it okay? Okay, this is not u of tx equals something depending on tx. Unfortunately, it remains a little bit implicit. With other symbols, since, okay, t was identified with s. Uh, well, t was equal to s. And uh, we have already said that uh, we can identify the parameter sigma with x. So uh, we can change names and place x in place of sigma, maybe. It's more, more. So u of t at the end, u of t, t divided by 1 plus x squared plus x is equal to 1 plus x squared. Okay. Yes, we have to be a little bit elastic with, the cha with these changes of names to the sim <laughs> of the symbols. Okay. Okay, and uh, this is, so, uh, so the expression of x of t the expression of x of, of x1, x2 was, say, t Uh, and then t plus x. This was x2 of t, x2 of s, right? This was x2 of s. I have identified s with t. So let us try to, to see. To write down, so these are curves in the plane, actually lines, if you want. Hmm? So the parameterization is just t into this, t into this. And x can be considered now as a parameter. So fix x, say, x here. And then I have a parameterization of a line which is, I don't know, uh, x positive. So I, so I pass through here, say, when t is 0, I am here, positive. And uh, the coefficient here is uh, <clears throat> changes when, when I move x, which is now a parameter, but uh, say it is sort of positive, so sort of this, like this. Hmm? Now I move x. Hmm? And uh, um, remember that our solution is the value of u bar. Our solution here is the value of u bar. I mean, u is sort of constant along this 
this line. Hmm? So constant depending on x, because we know that, well, remember our expression. So u along the line is a constant which depends on, on this choice of x. Hmm? It is written here. I mean, the, 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 the right-hand side is independent of t. So once I fix x, and I draw this line, then I take the value of u bar at, uh, at the value x, at, at, at the number x, 1. So this is u bar of x. Hmm? Now, now I change line. So I take another x here, and I want to understand what happens to the line. What do you think that it happens to the line? I mean, x is here now, so I'm passing through here at time 0. But the coefficient now, x is larger. The coefficient is larger. One of it is smaller. What happens to the line? Yeah, it becomes, the point is here, unfortunately, it's the t is vertical. But when the coefficient here is smaller, the line beco becomes, try to become more, say, more parallel to the vertical axis. Hmm? If you put t here, then you understand him. You are more, you may, may be more familiar. So when the coefficient is smaller, then you try to become horizontal if t is here. And now t, for, for some reason, strange reason, is vertical. <laughs> and so, so this means that now my line is this. Hmm? Problem. We know there is a problem, right? So we, we can say some sort of this. Maybe. OK, maybe sort of this. Sort of this. No, this is sort of this, and so on. So there is, in this picture, a first time, there is a first, initial, a first time such that two of these lines meet. There is a first time. T sing. Where two of these lines meet. And before it, they never meet. Hmm? May it happen that this is equal to zero, T sing? No, in this case, T sing is, non, is not equal to zero. In this case, T sing is positive and should be computed. I don't know exactly what it is, but it, it, I think it can be computed. Yes, this thing is, is non zero. Yes. Uh, the, the question is well, this thing equal to zero would mean a sing instant singularity. You start from an initial condition, which is u bar, and uh, the question if this thing is equal to zero, this means that instantly the solution makes something very strange. I don't know, it, it, it breaks the graph, makes a thing jump, uh, something like that. This is not the case for this equation. Uh, t sing appears, is a singularity time. We don't know what happens after that, but it is positive. Hmm? Well, this should be proven. You're right. I mean, it's not obvious. You, you should prove. Yeah, I think that this intersection point, yes, some, some line here. But I'm taking the first, point, the first time where this line starts, line of singularity, say. So you are so I, I'm saying that, I'm saying that uh, before this thing here in this region, 
our method of characteristics perfectly works. And the solution is this one, uh, is this one, a little bit implicit, but this can be uniquely solved. And so I, in principle, if I'm able to solve uh, cubic polynomials, <laughs> which in principle can be done, uh, I can solve this and write u of tx equals something depending on t and x. Okay? Now, uh, it, but then there is this thing, and it's very interesting. Try to understand what happens after this thing. But the point is that we don't have a notion of solution. We do not have it. Now, uh, if we continue to, I think that if we continue to our, our lines, so actually this thing is uh, sort of, of, of this picture here. Nothing happens for x negative, say. Hmm? So now, okay, uh, th this is not the right place to, uh, to continue the analysis of singular solutions to Berger's equation, which is, by the way, very interesting. Unfortunately, we cannot do this here. But le let us give you just another viewpoint of, of the same problem. Mm -hmm. So this is our U bar. So and, that, and let us look to our equation, which says that Ut if everything is smooth, uh, so if this is C1, U is C1, this is continuous, and so on, so we can take the product. Because you see, uh, assume, assume that you have a singularity. And assume that this singularity means that U jumps, hmm? becomes discontinuous. Because singularity should be defined what it is. Huh? But assume that for us now a singularity means that U creates a jump. Hmm? Then this is a big problem because ux is a measure. It's a sort of, I don't know if you know it, but it's called the delta, Dirac delta. Hmm? And the measure cannot be multiplied by this continuous function. This cannot be done in general. So uh, it is not easy at all obvious how to interpret this product. Measure times this continuous function. When you will study measure theory, probably you have studied some measure theory, then you have learned how to integrate a continuous function, maybe with compass support, I don't know, but continuous function with respect to the measure. This you can do, but the test must be continuous. Hmm? Now, what does it mean to integrate a discontinuous function with respect to a derivative which is, if u jumps, the derivative is a measure, is not clear. Hmm? And indeed, the maybe one way, more natural way to write it is, in, is this, so that at least this is in conservation law form and we can integrate by parts, as I've already tried to explain maybe one time ago, or two times ago, OK. But anyway, um, so let, let us assume that everything is smooth. And so look at this. This says that the horizontal velocity, ut, of the points of the graph of u solution, hmm, assume that u is positive, hmm, like in this case. U bar is positive, and assume that you can prove that if U bar is positive, U also is positive. Actually, it is immediate uh, by this equality. So we know that U is positive, OK? Now, uh, the velocity in the horizontal direction depends on the height, because there is U, X, U of x. So this is the height is y, is the variable y. If I am here, I have a velocity. If I am here, I have another velocity, because u is higher here. 
positive and higher. Then at the end, it turns out that, uh, that points here, higher points, It turns out that our solution is something like this. Um, <coughs> so the profile after some time is sort of this. So these uh, higher points move toward the right with faster than this. And so like a wave, exactly like a wave, you have a wave. And then as the sea proceeds in front of you, the waves try to become vertical. <laughs> and so at the end, what you see after the t sing is a time where you are in this situation. This is what happens at time t-sing in this case. But now you see what, what is the problem. U now is discontinuous after. So I mean, once you are in this situation, then this is not part of the graph usual, in the usual sense, because this is vertical. So this is actually, I mean, is, is, is sort of discontinuous function. Hmm? Now that you have, now you want to, to let the equation, the PD, continue, starting from a discontinuous. So you don't know exactly what to do. Because our initial condition U bar up to now was C1. <laughs> so we, we don't know exactly what to do. What is the, the, the right notion of solution starting from this initial condition is not clear at all. And we do not accept. I think I don't know what, what happens to the physical waves. But once once you, you look at the sea, you have this wave, then maybe this is not acceptable. Hmm? This is not a function, it's a multifunction, it's not a function. So maybe we do not accept this. We accept something which are graphs. So this is, for us, for some reason, we do not accept this. So it's not clear how to continue the solution. This is not part of the course. Of course, uh, it's from, from here, there is a story starting from here, exactly. It's a long story. OK. Just to have some flavor on what happens to this at this thing. OK. Now, I would like to leave you at homework for the next. So um, homework, L uh, let you be, so take B in Rn just to, this is, this is, uh, what? let you be, be, be the solution. to ut that we know is just the first example, interesting example of PDE, you, uh, this is now, and now, 
do not be too upset now t is larger than s. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, u of s, no, now I start at time s, and so it is f of s dot, so this is, this is just the linear transport equation with homogeneous with constant coefficients, so we know everything, just we start not at uh, time equal to 0, but at, 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 uh, at time equal to s, OK? f is smooth given, f is given, OK? And define, so homogeneous, but with an initial condition. What is dot? This means the following. What is dot? u of s x is equal to f s x for any x in r. Hmm? It's just to indicate uh, a variable. You know, we know that this is a function of x. Hmm? Maybe in some books, you, if, if f is a function of two variables, maybe in some books, again, this is a function of x. So we could write f of s here. But I mean, the important fact is, is that the notation is clear. It is clear what we mean, independently of the notation, OK? Maybe in some books on semigroup theory parabolic equations, maybe one uses also this, uh, this kind of. <coughs> anyway, now define u. Oh, I'm sorry, v. Maybe I change, I change name. v of tx equal integral from 0 to t of u um, uh, so let me denote by let me denote this solution I need I need a symbol the solution to this I denote it as u t s x hmm? starting at time s at a generic mm, larger time t. Hmm? OK. T, S, X, D, S. So let us superpose sum, somehow, uh, the solution of this homogeneous problem starting, however, not from 0, but from f. So I, I, I make a sort of super, superposition of solutions, or sort of some generalized sum. The homework is then, then V solves Vt plus B grad V equal F and V at 0 equal 0. In, in uh, uh, zero t times r uh, t was okay. This is related to the so called uh, Duhamel principle or Duhamel, I don't know, Duhamel, Duhamel principle, which is a principle which is very general, actually, not only valid for linear transport equation, but also for ODEs, differential equation, ordinary differential equation, also for other kind of linear par parabolic PDEs, other, other equation in particular for the linear transport equation it says the following assume that I want to solve a non-homogeneous problem with zero initial condition so non-homogeneous with zero initial condition the idea is that I can solve this as a superposition of what solutions u of homogeneous PD 
with f as initial condition at time s. Sort of general principle. Hmm? Okay. I think it's not, it's not, this is not a difficult exercise. I, I, don't, I don't think it's so difficult. I mean, you can simply differentiate with respect to t. You have t here and t here. So you have two contributions. Then you differentiate with respect to x. Of course, the, you can differentiate inside the integral. And, and immediately you see that this at time 0, if you put t equal to 0, then this, this is 0, clearly. So I think it's not, it's not so difficult. Hmm. OK. Uh, maybe, maybe we can do. Maybe we can do this remark. At, at this point, maybe we can do this remark. So th this is the, the homework, OK? Uh, maybe we can do this remark now. Uh, let us consider ut plus b equal f. Huh? Let's consider this and u equal u bar, say. Then we have the expression of the solution. Do you remember it? So we have u of tx is u bar of x minus bt plus the integral between 0 and t f of s. And then we have uh, x plus s minus t e ds. Hmm? Hmm? This was the solution, right? OK, so. This solution u, which has a right hand side and an initial condition, is the sum of this plus this. And this, so the, the, the first one, just solves uh, the uh, homogeneous PD with the initial condition u bar. So this is, say, the solution of the homogeneous problem. Mm -hmm. And this, what is this? Well, this should be the solution of the non-homogeneous problem with a zero initial condition. Ah, no, time is over now, sorry. 